Hi, and welcome to the Franklin Johnson Mansion. This is a two-story Italianate home completed in 1866. The style was very popular between 1840 and 1890. It's a simple cube style, and the exterior brick is covered with cement and score resemble ashlar, which was a cut stone used at the time. The house is two stories, and there's a three-sided bay window on the south side, and it's mimicked upstairs in the bedroom. This room that we're in now is called the North Parlor. It is the only room in the house that still has original features. The original features in this room are the Carrera marble fireplace, the ceiling medallion, and the molding, the ceiling, and the baseboard molding. Also, the doors and hardware are original to the home. Now this is a modern room, but it's all the same. You have your warp threads that go this way, and you put all those on and decide in how far apart you want them to be by putting them through a reed. And then, after you put the threads through there, then you also have to put them through a heddle. All these wires are heddles. Very old looms had thread heddles. And if you look closely, you can see right in the center there's a circular eye where you can put the threads through. This is a four shaft loom. So every time you raise a shaft, you're raising different threads. And then you could pass through what's called the shed. You could put your wet thread. And that makes your pattern. So depending on how you thread it, how far apart the threads are, and how you tie up your treadles to the shafts, that will determine what your pattern will be. Now if you notice, see these curved knives? Yes. Okay, those are, those are capital amputation knives. There's a reason why they're curved. Because at this time period, this was pre-anesthesia. What happened was is each of the different curves actually matched a different part of the anatomy. So that what happens with the curved blades and two cuts, you can actually take it down to the bone. Of the germ. Oh, okay. So there, there was no disinfectant in, in, in that they didn't realize they needed it. Toys for children, especially the what you call the middle class or the lower middle class, they had to make their own toys. Uh, boys played with balls, probably the father made something by sewing some leather together, uh, stuffing it with, this would be wool, not fiber the way we have today, and the boys would play with Other things the boys could make were kites. Wealthy boys' kites were made of silk. Either somebody in the large town would make the kite or they would be imported from Europe where a lot of the good stuff still came from. The average boy had to make his own kite, sticks and paper. A girl, about the only thing she could play with was a doll. So if your father was handy, the doll's body could be made of wood, he would carve it, and then the rest of it would be made with, uh, this is muslin. In the 18th century, it would be linen, because cotton was very expensive, and linen and wool were cheap. And then you get some ribbon and you tie it off. Uh, I used very simple stitching because I wanted to do it rather quickly. You could spend more time making it a little fancier. Tie a little ribbon around to tie the hat. And that's what the, a little girl would play with. Because that's the only thing she's going to play with other than helping mom in the house. Because all she's going to be someday is a wife and a mother. This is just a small part of our gallery of uh, photographs of old Wallingford. We have a large collection of uh, postcards which represent Wallingford. But these will show a lot of the areas. This is a 1915 picture of Center Street. And that, you can see all the old cars parked along the sidewalk. Here's one looking east at Fair Street. And as you can see, it's not paved. It's a gravel road. Another interesting thing, those of you who are familiar with Choate and Christian Street, that used to be a long dirt road with a big tree dead center in the road. So when carriages at that time came through, they would have to go around the tree to continue down the road. This is the old Oakdale Tavern, and it was really beautiful with all the architecture and the things there now. And it's unfortunate that that was taken down and there's no longer a restaurant over at Oakdale. We have pictures in the center of town in front of Simpson Court. There used to be a lovely gazebo there, which was along that area. 
And also, there was a water fountain at one time. And we do have postcard pictures showing the water fountains. But anyway, these all show you what it was like. Uh, the State Armory was built in 1920, and that's now the Wallingford Police Station. This was the International Silver Factory, and it's Factory L, and this is where the Silver Pond Apartments are right now, and that covers a lot of that territory. This is a photo of a uh, horseback rider coming down. I'm assuming that was a parade, and that's along going south on North Main Street from Academy Street. But uh, this is just, I say, a beginning of the pictures here, and there are a lot of postcards which we're organizing and inventory right now. Shaving off the top off of this side of the rim and shaving the bottom off of this side so when they overlap, they are the thickness of the rest of the rim. I am making yarn for one. With my hands, what I'm doing is I'm attenuating the fibers or I'm drafting, which means that I'm controlling how much fiber I allow into the twist. I let the twist travel up into the fiber and it's the twist that makes the yarn, gives the yarn its strength. So before there's twist, it comes apart very easily. Once I introduce twist into the fiber though, it becomes strong. When I get done, I'll take two or more strands and I will ply them together. And then these are what the ply here is my look like. And once I'm done spinning my fibers, then the, this would go to the weaver and the weaver would weave it into cloth for me. 